because I don't want to. Uh, but this is the more important person, uh, Horatio Gonzalez. Sorry, if I pronounced that right, did I? Yes, probably. And anyway, he's going to give you a talk into Kubernetes. So yeah, let's just get started. OK, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I am really happy to be here again and to do yet another talk like the last year, but this time we are going to do it about Kubernetes operator. So before beginning, let me ask some questions. Who here has already worked with Kubernetes? Hmm. Who here knows what are Kubernetes operators? Who here has already written a Kubernetes operator? Hey, sorry for you. You already know most of the thing I'm going to say. I am going to speak for all the others. The idea here is to show that Kubernetes operators are really powerful. They are going to allow you not only to simplify the operation of your clusters, but also to, from your cluster, operate outside software, outside infrastructure. We are going to see some real world examples and then we are going to live code our own operator. So let me introduce myself. I am Horacio González. Uh, I am a Spaniard living in France for over 20 years, so my English accent combines the worst traits of both Spanish and French accents. Sorry about that, really. I work for Clever Cloud, a, a European cloud provider. We are a PaaS, a platform as a service provider. Our idea is to make things easier for both developers and sysadmin slash DevOps slash SRE slash everybody who just administer the thing that developers do. And I warn, like last year, here you are going to see lots and lots of cute gophers like that. Why? Well, last year I was with my former colleague Aurelie Bash and we talked about Terraform providers. It was a really a good experience. And this year, I decided to do a similar talk about a su subject. I has worked a lot this year about Kubernetes operator. But Aurelie couldn't come with me, so I am doing it alone with all the life code and all that. So please me, wish me luck. Why go first? Yeah, because... I like to do talks that are funny, and I really love gophers, and because we are talking about Kubernetes, Kubernetes and Go, the language are very linked, so it seems logical to use the same uh, mascot. All the gophers you are going to see are drawn either by me or by Aurelie, and they are, of course, based on the original Go mascot designed by Renny Friends. So let's begin. Kubernetes operator. Well, if you don't know the idea, Kubernetes is really useful to tame the complexity of microservices. I mean, using Kubernetes, you can automate a lot of things in order to deploy, keep alive, and administer applications with a lot of services, a lot of mobile parts, a lot of uh, instances talking one with another. And it really simplifies things for both developers and sysadmin. But if you are deploying lots of applications and every application has a lot of components, you have a new complexity who arise, the complexity of using Kubernetes, of administering that Kubernetes clusters. You have lots of different objects, and you need to begin to think about automating your Kubernetes administration. There are tools that promise you to help with that. For example, Helm. Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes, so you can create Helm charts for your application with all the different Kubernetes objects that your application needs. 
It reduced complexity. Yeah, it's a good answer. But it doesn't do everything that a human sysadmin, a human DevOps, a human operator needs to do for that application. Helm helps you to install a upgrade your application, maybe doing rollback to a former version, but that's all. The human ops needs not only that, but it also monitor the application, knowing the states. They also get metrics, get traces, analyze them, finding eventual bottlenecks, finding performance problem, and a automating process inside the application, and all that is a lot more than simply deploying an application in Kubernetes. But Kubernetes is, at the core, an automation tool. So the idea is, well, maybe all the day-to-day -day tasks the human operator does for an application in Kubernetes could also be automated. I mean, all those tasks, they are mostly repetitive, and they don't ask for a high level of creativity. They are tasks that can be automatic, and that could liberate free time from the human operator to become more of a SRE than an assembly operator. So, we could try to use Kubernetes to automate the operation of apps in Kubernetes. That was the idea behind the Kubernetes operator. It's a Kubernetes version of the human operator that does the simply repetitive routinary task needed in order to operate a kind of application on Kubernetes. How can we build a Kubernetes operator? Well, we are using two concepts that are at the center of Kubernetes. We are using custom resources and controllers. Custom resources, the puzzle piece there, and controllers that I draw like the eye of Sauron. Why? We are going to see that. But let's begin with custom resources. In Kubernetes, Kubernetes is made to be extensible. You can add new components to Kubernetes to make, to adapt it to your needs. And the way to do that is by adding new resources to Kubernetes. We do that by creating custom resource definition. We define new kind, a new kind of custom resource. It's like a blueprint for a new kind of resource in Kubernetes, and we define that by YAML. Hey, the new resource will need this data, this data, this data, and this data. And then we install the custom resource definition in Kubernetes, and it extends the Kubernetes API with a new kind of object, and we can create new resource from this kind of object. Custom resources are simply data. They help you to modelize something. They are a data model for the object you want. For example, you can create a custom resource definition to modelize a new kind of database you are using. You are going to define what are the parameters needed in order to deal with your database. For example, the URL, the eventual port, the token, the disk capacity, everything that helps you to modelize how Kubernetes is going to interact with your database. There is no logic in a custom resource definition. Custom resources are only data. The logic is in the controller. The controller was role is to keep an eye in the resources. It's a reconcile loop. Controllers look at the instruction you have given to the cluster, at to all the YAML file you have deployed, and looks at the state of the cluster. Looks at the difference and then works in order to make sure that the state of the cluster is as close as possible to the definition you have given. All the controllers are specialized in a kind of resource, in a kind of thing to monitor. So there are a lot of native controllers in Kubernetes. For example, the deployment objects are a kind of controller. 
you say, hey, you are going to deploy this Docker image in three replicas, and it is going to keep looping. They told me three replicas. There are only two pods running. Hey, a scheduler, can you please, please add another pod? That's a controller example. But in Kubernetes, you can create your own new controllers. And that's the idea behind operators. We are going to try to learn about the human, about the task the human operator is doing, and we are going to modelize them as custom resources and controllers. I mean, a sample example. Let's say you want in Kubernetes create an operator for a database. Hey, because we don't only want to deploy a database, we want, for example, to be able to do some capacity planning. We want Kubernetes to look at the disk capacity, and if we are nearing the limit, it can automatically spawn a new volume in order to continue to make the, the database work, for example. That kind of things is the kind of things a human operator does. It looks at the metrics. Hey, we are arriving to the capacity limit. Let's span a new replica. And let's do some sharding. Let's add more capacity. Well, then we are going, in order to do our operator, we are going to try to modelize the actions that the human operator is doing in Kubernetes terms. That means creating some new custom resource definition. For example, for our database, we need a custom resource with the, all the database parameters and the current uh, use of the disk and the maximum capacity of the disk, and controllers, the logic part. OK, so the controller is going to monitor the current uh, disk use, and it's going to do some calculation. And if, if the current disk use is near the maximum capacity, we, we do some sharding, or we span a new replica, or whatever. OK, so we try to encapsulate the actions of the operators in CRD e controllers. And the CRD controllers are an operator that we deploy on the cluster. And it is going to do the day-to-day. -day All operators aren't the same. You can write operators that are really simple, like the one we are going to do in a few minutes. You can do really complex operators. There is a capacity model that try to classify operators about the capacity. Some are really able to almost autopilot a lot of things. For example, for PostgreSQL, there is an operator called uh, Stackgres that it does almost anything you would like to do uh, on a PostgreSQL. It's a bit difficult to configure, but when you install it and you configure it, it's really wonderful to use. It will be a phase five. We are going to do something in the middle today. A real world example. Why I am doing that? Because operators can be used to monitor your database that is inside your cluster. But you can also do it to monitor things that are outside of the cluster. At Clever Cloud, we have an operator that is available in Operator Hub. Operator Hub is a big, a big index of uh, public uh, Kubernetes operator that allows people to, from Kubernetes, pilot databases as a service that are in our platform and make those databases as a service available to Kubernetes application like if they were native Kubernetes databases. So the idea is our Kubernetes deployment don't, doesn't know anything about Clever Cloud Database as a service. OK, we are going to create a new custom resource definition for each one of our database motors, and we are going to do a controller. And this controller, when we create a new PostgreSQL object is going to 
connect this object to our database as a service to make sure that everything works well, but from the Kubernetes point of view, it will be like if we had our PostgreSQL database installed in the cluster. So when you think operator, think not only about Kubernetes, but about a nice way to bridge Kubernetes with other part of your infrastructure, because it is an advice, a very personal one, but putting everything in Kubernetes is really a bad idea. Unless you have a super good reason to do it, it's a very bad idea. So if you use operators, you are going to better uh, help Kubernetes to use things that aren't on Kubernetes, and you are going to monitor those external things easily without having to do everything by hand. So how can we write operators? Well, we can simply use the Kubernetes API. We are creating new Kubernetes objects. There is an API for CRD, an API for everything. But we could also use something called the operator framework. The operator framework is a framework in Go with some uh, wrappers in other languages that make easy to create full operators. We are going to use it because I want to show you that simply using a compatible Kubernetes client, you are going to be able to create your first operators. And then you can go deep in the complexity of Kubernetes operator, but please, it is easy to create an operator. You don't need for the first one to learn how they work to go with the operator framework. So what are we going to do in the next 30 minutes? We are going to create a full Kubernetes operator, an easy one, but full. And we are going to use it to handle the repository of gophers that I used last year for the Terraform provider. And the first version of the talk was do using Golang. Go. It's a wonderful language, but it is quite verbose, if you know what I mean. So in order to do some expressive live coding, I am going to do something that most Kubernetes using people are going to find odd. I am going to write my operator in JavaScript. Why not? In a few lines of code, we are going to do lots of things. And almost everybody can understand basic JavaScript, at least the basic one I am using for that. If you are able to do it in JavaScript, you are able to do it in Go, in Java, in Python, because there is a Python client, or in any language that has a Kubernetes client. All the code is available in GitHub, and I am going to put the slide uh, later this evening uh, on the web. You can find them in my Twitter. Uh, so don't worry if there is something do, you don't understand directly. Everything is going to be available. So let's begin. Ah, of course, we are going to use all the gophers for our early repository. So before doing my operator, I have created a container, a very silly container that when it starts up, it looks at the Gopher repository and it chooses one random repository and it shows that, that Gopher. Looks at the repository, choose one Gopher and expose it. It's a very, very simple container. We are going to deploy it in a cluster, so we will have 10, 15 gophers in our, in our cluster, 15 pods running a gopher container, each one with a random gopher, and our operator is going to try to connect to the pod to monitor what gophers are running and to show in them. That's the idea. So let's go to the terminal. I think I don't have anything more to do with that. Ah, first thing, I am going to create a cluster. A cluster, create, 
CFG M G N T Camp New. I am using CAD CAD 3D in order to create quickly a small cluster in my in my Mac because I wasn't sure I was I was going to have a Wi-Fi. It allows me to do things easy without having to think about that. So. I told before we have some Gopher container. Let me show you that. Gopher operator, random Gopher container. It is the container, it connects to ORLE repository and it choose a random Gopher, chosen Gopher. Okay, it, it recovers all the Gophers it uses a random index to choose one, and when it chooses it, it exposes it in one port. Nothing more, nothing less. So I have a very silly Docker file for that. I have even pushed that in my in my registry, and we have a manifest to deploy some Gopher, random Gopher deployment, a deployment with ten random Gophers. So we can begin by deploying that. kubectl apply dash f manifest random gopher deployment. kubectl get pods. It is creating my 10 random gophers. I don't know what gopher they are. Now we want to create a an operator. In order to create an operator, to, 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 where is my? Okay, no problem. In order to create an operator, we are using this project, Kubernetes Operator in Node. It's basically a thin, a thin wrapper outside the Kubernetes client for JavaScript. It allows us to create an operator object. Or I should say a controller object, and we can define the watches. What the controller watch? I told before, the controller is the eye of Sauron. It is watching every time something. So we can define, hey, I want to create a new watcher for some kind of Kubernetes resources. For example, let me go in my Gopher operator, and we are creating up. Oh. a very simple operator. OK, no, it's too complex, this one. Hey, I create a new operator, and I am going to give it an init method. When you create an operator, in any language, the first thing to do is to, dig, is to say, you need to watch that, that, and that. With our small framework, you are going to do in the init some watch resource. So I am created an operator that watch pods. It is going to connect to the Kubernetes API and listen to all, all the pods event. There are usually three kind of pod event. When the pod is created, when the pod is modified, and when the pod is deleted. So, okay, I, re, I re get the event. I, for the event, there is a TypeScript definition, but in the event, basically, there is a metadata. What is in this event? So, there is, for example, the type. Aided, modified, deleted. So my controller here is going to listen to all the pods event and put in the console the pod name. Added, modified, deleted. Then we start the operator and we see the result. OK, I think we can do it. All my pods are there, so I have all my random gopher pods. Kubectl, 
Ah, no, we are now, sorry, we are here in Gopher Operator, and I am going to say step one. I compile my TypeScript, and it starts, and it gets, it asks uh, to the Kubernetes API, hey, what are the pods? Okay, we have all the random gopher pods and all the normal Kubernetes pods that are running there. Hey, but I only want the random gopher pods. Okay. Up. We can simply filter. If metadata name different, uh, no. Upon starts with uh, random gopher. It seems silly enough. So now I am telling to my controller, I only want to deal with random gophers. With that, I mean you are going to get all the information you want directly from the API. Your job as a controller builder is only to do the right business logic with your controller. And I get the random gopher information I wanted to have. Well, but I wanted to say to watch the random gopher, okay. Matt, I want to know what are the gopher that is exposed but every random gopher post. But how can I do it? Well, if you need more information, the event is only going to give you some basic information about the object. If you need more, you are going then to ask the Kubernetes API. You can directly use any function in the Kubernetes customer client, or like we are going to do it, directly call in HTTPS with the credentials the Kubernetes API. I want to know what is the gopher running in every pod. So, as I did before, I am going to watch for the pods. I only going to look for the random gopher, and then I want to connect directly to the Kubernetes API. In order to connect to the Kubernetes API, you need your credentials. And it's at this moment that having a Kubernetes client is always useful. In the JavaScript Kubernetes client or in any other, there are functions in order to give you the credentials to connect. This function, when you are developing outside of the cluster, they are going to get the information for the local cube config. And if you are operating inside the cluster, they are going to get the information for a service account. We are going to see that at the end of the talk. So I am using this cube config apply to HTTP options to get an options object with the certificate and the credentials to connect to the cluster. After that, I am going to be able to do a simply HTTP call to the cluster address slash API, the name of the, the version, the namespace, the name of the object I want, and then the pod and the name of the pod. So here I am addressing that pod. I am addressing the proxy entry point for that pod that allows me to pass request directly to the pod. So I am going to ask to the pod, what is the gopher you have? And the only thing you need is to give the cluster credentials. So now, when I get an event for a gopher, I am going to ask the Kubernetes API, okay, that pod, which, uh, which gopher it is running 
For the rest, it is the same thing that before. Let's do a it. So, up, control C, we are going to do the step three. Asking info about pod, random gopher. Why I don't get the answers yet? All my pods are okay. I have done one, yet another silly thing here. Possible. Ta 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 ta. Pod is gopher. Don't asking about pod, and we aren't getting any answer. Why not? Let me try. Ta 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 ta. Not found. Request. Let us. What if I do here again? Not found. Ah no, that's, that's the API. Wait a second. Hmm? Okay. It worked the first time. I was. Well, don't worry. We are going to see the result. So, we ask, we get the information. Now, let's say that I want to do something with that information. And that's when my operator is going to be interesting. Let's say I have an external API. An API in order to use the gophers. For example, a, I have an external API. In this API, I can give the list of the gophers currently running on my cluster. It's a very simple CRUD API with a nice user interface. And it's outside my cluster. So I want my cluster to register with the API, use an API key, and send the information, and keep the API updated. If I delete one random gopher pod, it is going to span a new one with a different gopher. I want that the API is updated. The API is a gopher API watcher. So how can I do it? The idea is I want to do that. I have my gophers. I want the controller to know at every moment what are the running gophers. I want this information to be updated in real time in the API. If we are able to do that, we are able to do anything more complex and less silly with real data. I have deployed the API in an in an instance running in our cloud, far from here. And when we boot up, it is going to give me an API key. So I need to declare this API key and this API endpoint to my cluster. My cluster don't know anything about my application. Yeah, we can define my API like a custom resource. We need to do a custom resource definition. What's a custom resource definition? As I told you before, a custom resource definition is only, I try to see how much time I have left, okay. It is only a manifest, it is YAML. Custom resource definition. Hey, I am creating a new API, inversion API extension VN, custom resource definition. I give it a name, Gopher APIs and organization, lost in Brittany.dev, the group. And in this API, I define a schema. The idea schema. The idea is we are going to define the data model. What do I need for my API? Well, I need an endpoint. It is going to be a string, a URL, and an API key. 
There are the two things that Kubernetes need to talk to my API. Perfect. So I'm going to call that Gopher API. I deploy that in my cluster. Up. kubectl deploy manifest Gopher API CRD. Uh, not deploy, that's an existed apply. Sorry, I think I have ACA. I really love when I am silly in face of the camera. Cuckoo. <laughs> no! What's the problem? I see. <laughs> okay, I see, I, I think I see the problem. I am silly, but no so silly. Uh, uh, play? <laughs> hey, oh! Reset. Reset. Reset? Yeah. Now try again. What's that m magic? Please? <laughs> no? No? No! <laughs> okay, I know what I am going to do. Cube CTL apply does F manifest <laughs> go for API CRD. Ta -da! <laughs> Now I have a new object in my Kubernetes. I can create APIs. I am going to define the API. So I go to my console, I get the API key, ta -ta 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 API key, API key, it is here. I can define a new object from Gopher API kind. A new object with an endpoint, an API key. I put the API key, I can deploy it, and I am not going to do any history things. I am going to write again. And now I have just deployed the API as an object. So Kubernetes, if an application asks for the API, it is going to give it the endpoint and the API key. Of course, we can also monitor the, the API objects using, using my operator. Here we have an operator that only listen to the Google, to the Gopher API subject. What's the resource lost in Brittany Dev, V1, uh, Alpha 1, Gopher APIs? And it is going to read the API object and be able to show the API key. Let's try to do it. Okay, up. Step four. And we have my API. So now we are going to combine both things. And we are going to have our operator, a controller and a custom resource. Well, we begin like before. We are going to create an operator. We are going to say it, to tell it to watch the API objects. We need to recover the endpoint at the API key. But we are also going to tell it to watch the pods, specifically the random gopher pod. If we find a random gopher pod, we are going to do something different according to the event. If it is a new pod, we are going to try to 
get the pod information and then send the pod information to the external API. Okay, get the information, send it to the external APIs. Modified, same thing, we are going to send it to the external APIs. Delayed, well, because the delayed call don't need all the gopher information, all, uh, only the ID we are going to send and delete to the external API. In order to get the coffer information, like before, we are going to do a proxy call to every gopher pod to get for the gopher name. We are also used for deleting. Well, for the later gopher, we only need the ID, so we call the external API. As we have got the API definition, we only do a delayed call to the external API. We also, in order to clean the external API before doing anything, do a delayed all gophers call that we call at the beginning, and the send gopher that it is going to use the API key and send the gopher information with the right method, post or put. And here we are simply doing some HTTP calls. In your controller, you can call internal Kubernetes objects, but you also call, can call any external REST API. Or using any library you want, you could post some message in a Kafka or in a Pulsar. You could do anything you want. Having the controller allows you to address any external software or infrastructure you want. Here it's a sample REST API. So I decide, decide to begin a new operator and to run it. As I told before, first thing, when we get a new API, we get the API, we delete all gophers from the external API from begin a new. Okay, we can try to do that. Okay, lot of things. Let me begin. Okay, first thing, it get the API custom resource and it is able to get an endpoint and an API key. Then, for every random gopher pod, it get the event. With the event, we call the API, and the API give us the gopher information. This gopher information, we post it to the API, and we get the right answer. So the first one, second one, it files gopher. Nice. If we go to the API now, we call and we get exactly perforous X files. That means that, for example, my monitoring application is able to show all the cute gophers that are currently in my cluster. But let's say that I, yeah, I am really a bit tired of Yoda. I want to delay this pod. Well, kubectl delayed pod random gopher. We see here that first thing it does before delaying the pod the deployment is already spanning a new one. So we get the new pod message with a new pod. And then this new pod at the beginning has no information. So every time as it begins to recover the container, to boot up the container, every time the pod is modified, we get some modified methods. The life cycle, it's a bit complicated because of that. 
you must know that the same modified event is called three, four times during the boot up phase of your uh, pod starting. And then we get the deleted message for the for the original pod before it is modified for the state terminating and all that and then it gets deleted. It does mean that all the information is sent in real time and we don't have the Yoda anymore and we have a new one who has arrived. So the idea is I get all the message, I filter those what I need and I send the information to the external API. We are almost good. I have two minutes. How do you install this operator in Kubernetes? The only thing you need to make the same code work in Kubernetes is to create a service account because here I am using my kubeconfig. I am root on my kubeconfig. I am admin of the cluster. If you want to deploy the operator, you need to give it a service account in order to work. So. In two minutes, we create a service account, we create an airbag, a service account, a cluster role that allows it to watch the objects we want it to watch, the pods and the Google APIs, and the cluster role binding. We deploy it, and, and that's the only, the only change we need. We ask it to use a service account token. If we are in local, it is going to say, hey, I have the kubeconfig. If we are in the cluster, it is going to ask the service account. And all that if then it is done by the Kubernetes client. So simply, I am asking my Kubernetes client in order to, uh, to get the right information. Where I am doing that, wait a second, go for operator, trying to send you the resource event, get gopher. Yeah, I am going to get service account token, keep confit, get current user, and if there is no get current user, if I get a user, I ask the auth provider to give me the token file that I can use in all my calls. So now I only need to do for my operator a Docker file. I deploy it in the registry and I do a manifest. There is oh my gopher operator manifest. I deploy the same code we have, hid, we have seen here. My controller is deployed, my CR are deployed, my CRD, and it is going to work automatically on my cluster. And in order to do that, I am simply going to stop that and kubectl apply, ta, 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 ta. oh, I am making things dangerous. <laughs> yeah, too dangerous. Cube, last command, kubectl, apply, last f, manifest, uh, gopher operator airbag, and gopher operator. And now, there is a pod running on my cluster for my operator with my controller, and it is doing all that monitoring directly on the background. So we have done a full Kubernetes operator in some 25 minutes. Okay, it's a very simple one and whatever. But that means that creating an operator is not so complex. The most complex part is thinking about the logic of your operator. It is not really a coding problem, but a logic problem. What do you need to monitor? 
what are you going to do? What kind of business logic are you doing? But you can use it to help you to operate your Kubernetes clusters and your Kubernetes application, but also helping you to use, to monitor, to operate, and to communicate with external objects. So for me, that means that almost everybody using Kubernetes could have some interest in learning the base of creating an operator. Thank you very, very much.